silver, which is going to be my facing back camera, I had to get a nice uh, handlebar mount. This is the best I could find. I know there's other ones there. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to do the job or not, but it was the it was the best I could find. The thing I'm concerned about here with this one is will it be high enough? Uh, because this only reaches up about maybe four or five inches when you have the camera on top of here. It's going to be about that high. I'm hoping that's going to be good enough for for facing me. If not, I'm going to have to keep looking and try and find something something better. But this is pretty good. It's really well made. It's uh, you know solid metal construction. It's uh, it's pretty high quality, and it looks like it'll stay without falling off or anything like that. So I'm hoping that's going to work for my facing me camera. I'll tell you, man, lots of cool stuff. When I was on my motorcycling video, as you well know, I ran into uh, a lot of issues getting power, especially staying at non-hydro sites. Uh, even though I did have a little USB in the bike, it was still difficult to keep everything charged up. My phone, my cameras, everything else. So, as many suggested, you can't just plug it in the bike at night because you could drain your battery. So I went and got this uh, power bank. This is one of their top sellers right now. Haven't tested it out yet, but I think it, it could help me as well. And the beauty of this power bank, and it's a pretty powerful one. It's it's got holds quite a bit of juice at 26,800 milliamps. And you can charge it, of course, manually through a USB, but it is also solar. So if I'm at a non-hydro campsite or something like that, if I happen to get fairly bright, or even when it's not uh, completely bright. Uh, it'll still charge by solar. Haven't tested it to see how well it works, but this should be able to help me to charge things like this and my Osmo and my phone and all these other things I need to be able to keep going so that I'm not just riding by these places and saying, sorry, my camera was battery was dead and I didn't get any footage for you. So this is uh, my first attempt at getting a nice power bank. So I really like that. I did have my, my little white one, I'll show you. I did bring this one, which we got with our phones a long time ago, and it's a little battery too. But it was helping, but to see this is only a 3000. So this is a much bigger upgrade with that. So I'm just going to keep that in there like that. And then we will have a power bank battery backup without any risk of using the bike battery or, or wearing down the bike battery. So that was another new addition. I ordered these some time ago and because it's been winter I haven't been able to put them on yet. These are uh, grip pads for the tank and uh, I'm still on the fence about using these. I don't know if it's going to make the bike look crappy or if it's going to make it not as nice for me. I don't know. Maybe they can be removed if I really don't like them. They were kind of pricey though. They were like 75 bucks so I want to give it a try now. Um, and so you put those on the side of my tank. They're made for my bike and that's so that when if I'm doing uh, some off-roading or doing some rough roads and I want to stand up a bit and grip the sides of the tank with my legs, I'm not going to lose grip. I'm not going to slip. Uh, I'm going to have a good grip on the bike while, while I'm riding and doing some off-roading stuff in that. So it's just another accessory for the bike, which I thought was cool. Another thing that I wanted to do was get some extra gas storage. Found this, this little guy online. It's only 2.5 liters, little jivvy gas can. Um, that's all well and good. I know it's a fairly cheap one and you know, I may never use it, but I just toying around with the idea. It was pretty cheap. So I just thought, what if we got that? My biggest problem with this is how do I mount it onto the bike? Now you can find videos online where there's a special uh, mount kit that that goes on the bike but the problem is at least here in Canada you cannot get it uh, and it doesn't fit with my bike uh, it, you have to buy the entire pannier to go with it and then it's part of the pannier in order to put that strap kit that holds it on the back of the bike I have to experiment with some options and try to see if there is a reliable way to strap this onto the back of the bike somehow without any chance of it falling off um, I don't know. So if that doesn't work, I might have to stick it in a pannier. Well, now everything could be could be like 
gas smelling in there and you could contaminate other stuff in the pannier. Uh, not to mention you're losing a whole bunch of room doing that for something that you may never even need to use. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a good idea or not, but we're going to give it a try. I got, I know everyone loves to use their cell phones and their apps out on the road uh, to find their way around and to navigate and to find tra uh, trails and things like that. But I got a book anyway because you never know if that stuff's not going to be good for you and also sorry to say but you know i'm not 20 years old anymore and it's hard to look at tiny little screens and stuff like that especially when you're out in the broad sunlight and if you're anywhere near my age you'll know exactly what i'm talking about it's really hard to see it's hard to navigate on those little apps and maps of exactly where you are and have a real good picture of where you are and where you're going and planning your route and finding your way around unless you're uh, GPS has it all pre-programmed for you and if you're going to be exploring back roads and stuff I guarantee that's going to be a nightmare trying to do that so why don't we go old school and go back to the good old book so I got this one here which is a large-scale back road maps and what it does is you can zoom in on your area and it's all listed in order it's very easy to find in here so when I'm on the side of the road I don't have to rely on nothing you can just say go to what page for whatever area you're in and it has a, the whole map of Ontario listed out for you. Let's just see here. You can see here. All the, go all over Ontario, which, which is about where I'm going to be going this summer. All the way up north, all the way to uh, Thunder Bay or all the way east to Ottawa or whatever. And then you say, okay, I'm going to look in this area and if I'm going to be here, I'm going to go to page 48 and then it'll show you not only the the main routes but what i like about this is it shows everything and it will show by legend if it's if it's a dirt road if it's a gravel road and then you can you can really sit at, you know you can sit down at a place where you stop for coffee or something and you can say hey let's check out this road and uh, and you know you can maybe discover a lot more stuff than if you're just cruising down the highways or doing what the gps tells you to do so Hopefully that's going to be uh, some help as well. Other than that, I do have another item coming. Um, I know in another episode you saw me kind of struggling with the uh, the flat disc thing that I got for putting under the foot of the kickstand. And uh, I'm finding that is not practical. I'm looking for a better way. So I found one that permanently attaches to the foot of the kickstand. That's coming in the mail. Uh, I hesitated on buying that because that is pretty expensive too, a lot more than I think it should be, but I can't find a cheaper one anywhere else. Everyone's selling it for the same, so I guess it is what it is. So if I want it, I gotta pay the price. And so here's one more thing I was gonna do. I forgot to add this here. Um, this isn't new stuff that just arrived, but I might as well just throw it in since we're talking about gear and stuff. I have this uh, really cool thing that I got from Honski, uh, and it holds uh, my SD cards really nicely, uh, safely, securely, waterproof, and uh, in a big enough uh, case that you're not going to lose it. And then I kind of keep all this miscellaneous stuff in a separate case in my case so that whenever I need to get my stuff, it's all in one place and I'm not losing anything, which is kind of nice. But uh, I've asked around some other motovloggers how they keep track, especially, especially if they go on multiple days on the road, how they're keeping track of all their files and, and what was filmed when and all that sort of thing. A lot of them have a laptop on the road and they'll uh, upload each day and put them in files named by the date and things like that. But I thought of a simpler system because I don't think I'm going to go on the road for any longer than 9-10 days, at least not until this COVID clears up and then I might take a, a big month excursion somewhere we've been talking about, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, like one of these 64 gig uh, SD cards is good enough for me to film pretty much all day for pretty much two days. Uh, I can get two days of filming out of one SD card. Maybe some people are more. And the reason being is um, I'm not filming everything in 4K and stuff like that. So I can get two days worth on there and you can still get good 1080p at 60 like what you're watching now. And uh, it's fine. So if I get two days on here, and remember, the one's in the camera right now, and I think I have a few spares. But even with just these eight, that's a maximum of 16 days on the road I can be just with what's on these. So how do you know what's what, right? Like how, when, when one's filled up, 
how are you going to know what day that was for when you finally get back and you and you start doing your editing and making your your series well i kept all of these adapters for the sd cards which is for like the old school adapters i don't know why they still give you these because nobody uses them but i use them as protectors for your sd card so when you get your sd card out and you fill it up and you say okay i've got two days worth of stuff on there stick it in there that's going to keep it nice and safe and protected and now i can get a, a little piece of painter's tape or something like that and i'll stick painter's tape on there and i'll just write on there what the date was this was for monday tuesday september 19 and 20 or whatever and then i can stick that in there and so long as i don't lose this we're good to go when i get back home I have, I know what days are ready to go and I don't have to load everything into the computer at once because that's a huge amount of data. I can just go one day at a time and keep organized that way without having to load everything and get a laptop and all that stuff. I think it's, it's a little simpler method, but I think it's going to help me keep organized. So there's a little tip for any of you that are motor vlogging out there or making stuff. That's sort of a way I'm going to keep. So I've been keeping all of these and I'm just going to do it that way. So another thing I got was a new license plate cover. I haven't tried it to see if it fits, but this is a solid metal one. It's a, a lot harder plastic construction, maybe easier to get on and off. I have not tried it yet. I don't know if it's going to work, but we got a nice new license plate cover. And then let's have a look in here and we got really cool motorcycle glasses now these are like the high-end ones they're practically like goggles but they're made for motorcycling and uh, they're very high-end uh, called bobsters and they come with not only these lenses which are really cool but they come with three sets of lenses they have sort of the light uh, medium I don't know if it's light medium or ones for night and ones for uh, certain weather conditions i'll have to play around with them and see right now i've got it on the, the dark glasses so these lenses just you just squeeze it and you pop them out and you can put in your other lenses if you want to go with the different kinds of lens it's also ventilated you can see with all the holes on top so you have this space but it does seal around your eyes so that you're not getting uh, all the air blowing on your eyes when they're so full protection of the eyes any dust and things like that are not going to get into your eyes and it's all nice soft padding there and then they go on so I don't know if they look cool or not but we're going back and we're going back and they're ready we're going go down the road with our goggles what do you think so there you go there's uh, some new goodies that that I've been collecting over the winter and we're going to apply all of this and uh, hopefully that's going to make a nice new channel for us.